All right, looks like we're recording. Uh, thanks everyone, thanks for joining today. This is our uh, afternoon session on 15 tips in 15 minutes. This is 15 drive tips. I'll be talking fairly quickly, but don't worry, there is a slide deck there, bit.ly slash 15 drive tips, uh, which is a Google Slides deck, and there is 15 slides, and each slide has uh, a close to one minute video in there. So if you wanna review any of these, uh, you can either watch the recording of this, or you can uh, go through those uh, slides. All right, let's dig in. Um, so my name's Chris Betcher. For those that haven't met, I'm on the Google for Education team, and uh, we are doing these um, uh, sessions as part of our Back to School for 2023. I have 15 tips for you today with Google Drive. Some you may be aware of, some you may not be aware of, uh, but hopefully there'll be something in here to speed up your productivity and make your life simpler. Uh, those are the tips. I am going to go through like this. Uh, and I'll give you little demos where I can. So first of all, I come out of this view here. First of all, let's talk about the, when you go into Google Drive, and Google Drive is obviously this place here, it's just drive.google.com, and I'm assuming that most of you know how to get to Drive. Uh, once you get to Drive, you'll see there's a bunch of things in here. I want to point out, first of all, these three things, my drive, shared drives, and shared with me. These three buckets over here are really important that you know what they do. My drive is where all your files go. Shared drives is where files that uh, are shared with your organization go. So your school can set up a shared drive, for example. Uh, you might run a project in a shared drive. The neat thing about shared drives is they're owned by the organization, not the individual. Uh, and that's important because if you have a file, a folder full of stuff that's owned by a person and that person leaves your school, uh, it's always problematic. What do you do with their stuff? When, when it's in a shared drive, it belongs to the school. So that's the important difference between my drive, your stuff, shared drive, the school stuff, and this other one called shared with me, because Google is a collaborative system where you can share files with each other, uh, if someone shares something with you, you'll find it in here in the shared with me collection. And just, a, just a, a hint, some people will look at this big mess in here of shared with me and they get really frustrated because they're, they're clean and neat freaks like I am and they like things to be orderly. Uh, you really can't do much to organize your shared with me collection. So just if it bothers you, don't look in there. Right? It's, just a, it's just a mess. Um, if you do have something in here that you think is important and you want to put it in your filing system, what you can do is you can right click on it and say add a shortcut to drive and then you basically add it to your my drive and you can put it anywhere you like there okay so that's how you deal with the mess that is shared with me all right that's our first tip second tip is um uh, second tip is this one creating new files and folders so really simply when you're in google drive there is a big button at the top that says new and when you click it this is where you create new things um, if you came from Microsoft land, you might be familiar with when you try to create a new document, you look for the little blue W on your on your uh, desktop, and you double click it, and you make a new page. Um, in Google land, it's a little bit different. You go to drive, you click that new button, and you say, I want a new Google Doc, or I want a new Google Sheets, or I want a new Google Slides, or I want a new folder. So everything you want to create is done with that new button that is right there. And also, can I just point out that if you scroll down a little bit further where it says more, there's, guess what, there's more. So uh, you can actually create all sorts of things from that new button. That's how you get things started in Google Drive. Um, the next tip is that you can use search to quickly find what you're looking for. Um, in traditional computing systems, usually it revolves around you remembering where you put things. So you might have a folder and a folder inside a folder and you might have a bunch of folders um, and keeping organized is a matter of you remembering where you're putting all the stuff. Uh, in Google Drive, it's a little bit different because there's a search bar at the top here. So if I search for 15 tips, you'll see it very quickly finds all of the things in my drive that have anything to do with 15 tips. If I am looking for something to do with certification, if I can spell it right, certification, it will very quickly find me all of the things in my drive that have anything to do with certification. Use the search, Luke, right? Because it's a really quick way to find things. The other thing about search, you might notice on the search button at the top of the screen here, there is a little diagram at the end that looks like a bunch of sliders. If you click on that, you can do what's called a, um, a customized search where you can say, I want to look for something that I remember it was a presentation and I remember the owner was me and I think I used it sometime in the last 30 days but I can't remember what it was called, but if you, if you put the criteria in, then it will filter down and only show you the things that match that criteria. Search in Drive is really powerful. Um, and if you're used to doing it the old way, where you just remember where you put things, 
uh, try and wipe that out and start using search because it is a far, far better way to find things. Um, the, the next tip is that making folders easy to find with stars and colors. Sorry, that one there. So when you're in Google Drive, um, let me go back into my drive for a second. You will see if I scroll down here, some of these folders have colors like my classroom one, I've got another one down here called my meet recordings and so on. If you want to color code things, what you can do is you can simply right click on the folder, go down to where it says change color and you've got some colors to pick from. Um, it seems like a simple thing, but you'd be surprised how useful it can be to simply color code your work. You might have a system for it where everything that's green is, I don't know, one category and everything is red is something else. Um, I just like pretty colors, so I just make things colored, but you can have whatever system you like. The other thing you might like to do is, you notice there's a collection on the side here called Starred, and in the Starred collection, there is one, two, three, four, five, six files there at the moment, but if I was to go into my drive and find something that I wanted to access, say, fairly regularly, let's find it. Let's find an actual file here. Let's say this one called the assignment workflow in classroom. Let's say that's an important file. I need to get to it often. Instead of hunting through my main list all the time, I can just right click it and say, add that to starred. And when I add it to my starred collection, when I go into starred, there it is right, uh, right there. Okay. So instead of having thousands of files to look through, you might only be using this you know, 20 or so files on a regular basis. Star them. And then you can go into your start collection and find them really easy without having a hunt for them all the time. All right, next tip is that we can collaborate and share with others. You probably know that Google Docs is a collaborative system where you can, um, sorry, wrong slide, where you can share your work with other people. So if I'm in a document, and let's just go to, uh, let's just pick this one here, right? So I'm in a document here. I can right click on that document and I can say share and I can share that document with somebody else by clicking on the share thing here and I just type their name in. So I might share this with say Kimberly and I type her address in there and say send and it will send that document to her as a shared document. She'll get a link to it. There's only one document. She's not getting another copy of it. It's the same document, but we both work on it together. Now, the important thing about the sharing that you may not realize is that if I go to say my drive, if I pick a folder, so not a file, but a folder. So I go to this one called, uh, I don't know, um, assignments, and I right click on it and I share the folder, it will actually share everything inside that folder. So if I share this folder with Kimberly, right, like that, and she'll wonder what's going on here. Um, and I can make her an editor or a commenter or a viewer. Uh, I can even put an expiry date on there if I only wanted to access it for a certain period of time. Um, but once I do that, then I can say send, and it will now share that whole folder with that person. And importantly, it'll share all the files inside that folder as well. So my recommendation to you when you're creating stuff for students, if there's a lot of things you want to share, don't share them one by one. Put them all in a folder, share the folder, and then everyone gets access without you having to go and change the permissions on every single file. All right, I'm going to cancel that because I don't really want to bother Kimberly with that. But let's look at the next thing. Next thing says create workspaces for your project. Workspaces are relatively new in Drive, and you'll find them by going to this priority section here. Now, if you don't see the priority section, your administrator may not have turned it on for you. Um, but let's assume you can see it because most people will. If I click on priority, you'll see at the top here, it gives me a bunch of suggested files. And how does it figure out what's suggested? Well, it, it looks at what files I use recently, what, what files I use most often, what files I'm likely to use at this time of day, and it puts them in this list here. So priority is a good place to start because chances are that's what you're looking for right there. But if you scroll down a bit, you'll see these blocks here called workspaces. And each of these workspaces is a collection of files that could be physically stored anywhere, but you want to grab them together for some reason. I'll give you an example. Let's create a new workspace. And I'm going to call this 15 tips. Now, oh, sorry, 15 tips. Now, I actually have some of my 15 tip resources scattered throughout my, my drive. Some are in one folder, some are in another folder, some are somewhere else. But if I create a workspace, what it will do is it'll create a workspace and it'll try and intelligently find stuff that might be useful because I called it 15 tips. So it's actually looked through and it's found some 15 tip stuff for me. 
Uh, that looks pretty good for me, but there's actually more things I want. So I want that one and that one and that one. And I want, uh, I don't want that one, but I want this one and this one. And there's probably a couple of others I want well. So I'll click on add more and I'll say, let's grab, um, well, maybe there's no more to get, but I, I, if there was more, I could grab them in there. I will put that one in there. And when I say done, what it does is it creates for me a workspace here called 15 tips with those things in it. And it's a nice, neat way. The way I use this is when I'm working on a project and there's just like something I might be working on temporarily or something I access really often and I'll create a workspace for it. And then I can put the files in there that are easy to find, they're easy to get, they're in my priority section and they can come from anywhere on my drive. But they all appear in one place, in one workspace. You can have up to eight workspaces. When you're done with a workspace and you don't need it anymore, you can click on the dots here and either hide it or remove it but you can only have eight active ones at a time. So that's workspaces. Uh, next tip is that you can convert Microsoft files to Google files. So if someone gives you a Word document or a PowerPoint file or an Excel file, and you say, well, I'd like that to be in a Google Doc or a Google Sheet or a Google Slide, uh, yes, you can do that. And the easiest way to do it is to go up here to the cog wheel at the top of Drive and to the settings for Google Drive, and you'll see there's a setting here that says convert uploads to Google Docs format. And if you tick that box, then if you drop a Word file inside your drive, it will automatically convert it to a Google Doc. If you drop an Excel file, it converts to Sheets. If you drop a PowerPoint, it converts to Slides. So that those three file types from Microsoft and those three file types from Google, they're a match for each other, and they will convert nicely back and forward and if you tick that box, you won't even have to think about it. It will just automatically make the conversions for you every time you drop a Word, PowerPoint, or Excel file into your drive. All right, while you're in there, there's also the option to work offline without a connection. Some people think that you can't do anything in Google Docs if you don't have an internet connection. And look, there is some truth to that. It's certainly much more useful if you are connected to the internet, but it's, it's, it's certainly possible to do quite a bit even without an internet connection. And the way you can do that is to go down here and tick this box that says offline. This is again, this is in the settings where we were before. So you tick the box that says offline, and that now will mean that Google Drive will do everything possible it can for you to make sure that your files work even without an internet connection. Now, what if you um, have a particular file that you want to make sure is available offline? So let's say this 15 drive tips file. Let's say I want to make sure this one is definitely available when I'm not online. I can right click it and I can tick this box here that says available offline and I can turn that on like so. You'll notice it says down the bottom making that file available offline and any second now I'm going to get a little tick next to it. I should get a little tick next to it. Maybe it'll take a moment. But that file will be available offline. So even if I lose my internet connection, I can still work on that file. Okay, so just again, just right click, tick the little box that says make it available offline. And now you see when I go back to it, that is turned on. That file will be available even without an internet connection. That's handy to know. Um, all right, check your storage. Uh, we all know that the stuff you put in your drive, yes, it counts towards some storage. Uh, but how much storage? Well, you can find it out by going to your drive and down the bottom here. Under the list on the left-hand side, you'll see there's a little cloud there. It says storage. And if you click that, it will tell you how much storage you're currently using. I'm currently using 21.49 gigabytes. It tells me how much of that is in Drive, how much is in Gmail, how much is in Photos, right? And it all adds up to be that number there. Now, if you wanted to clean up your Drive and get rid of a few things, it's actually very handily put a list underneath there of all of your files from the biggest to the smallest. So I can come in here and say, you know what, this Google Earth video here, I, uh, I don't need that anymore. I could save nearly four gigabytes if I got rid of that. And here's another three and a bit gigabytes. So just those two files alone, I would save eight gigabytes. So, and I probably don't need those files because I've already put them on YouTube. So have a look at your storage, clean it up if you need to be. If everyone cleans up their storage, it makes a big difference for the school overall. So oh, good to know. Uh, let me go back here. Um, so next tip is to create files from a template. Sorry, that one there, create files from a template. You know, I've pointed out before this new button, and I said you can go to new, and you can make a new Google Doc. But if you go to a little arrow on the side here, you'll see you have the option of making a blank document or from a template. So if you click from a template, it's going to go to the Google Docs template gallery. And 
there are two categories to the templates. There's the general one, which is all the ones that Google provide. You can see there's quite a few in there for writing letters and resumes and proposals and all sorts of things. So there's a whole bunch in there. This is great for students to help them get started. You know, the intimidation of looking at a blank page. Um, sometimes if you give a student a template, it's, it's a much easier starting point. Um, but there's also a second category here called the, um, this will be your local school. If your school has set it up, you'll see some school templates here. I haven't set it up on this account, so that's why mine is empty at the moment. But if your school has set that up, you'll see a whole bunch of specific school templates um, if you want to have a look in there. All right, next tip is that uh, you can see the file details and activity information. So if I come over here to my files, let's go to my drive, and I look at all my files and I go, hmm, okay, there's a bunch of things here. Let me fall, let me go down below the folders. Uh, so this, this, um, this ACT demo, I wonder, when was that last changed? Who owns it? Where is it stored? How much storage does it take up? If you click on a file to highlight it, so it's highlighted in blue there, and then you click the little information button up in the top right, a panel will open up there and it'll tell you everything about that file. So if I go to details, it says, okay, here's who has access. <laughs> you see my little Simpsons characters there have access, my dummy students. Uh, but until it's a Google Doc, this is how big it is, this is where it's stored, this is who owns it, this is when it was last modified. If I look on activity, it'll actually tell me when it was created, when it was edited, who changed the name, who, who was added, who was deleted from um, being an owner of that file. So lots and lots of stuff you can see in there in the, in the uh, activities panel on the side. Um, it's kind of useful to know. All right, uh, we're nearly done. Stand out with emojis in your file names. You might have noticed in my Google Drive up here at the top, some of my file names or folder names, I've put little emojis in the front there. And I like to do that just because it makes it easier to look at, it makes it a little bit prettier. But mainly because an emoji, alphabetically, an emoji comes before the actual letters. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, an anchor is actually alphabetically before this building, which is before this light bulb and so on. And all of those are alphabetically before any word that doesn't have an emoji. So by putting an emoji in your file name, you can actually put it at the top of your file list. So even though this one called Understanding Workspace Plus, if I left it without an emoji, it would be way down the bottom of my list somewhere. But because I use it all the time, I put an emoji in it, and now it sits near the top of my list, and I don't have to scroll up and down all the time. So it's pretty, and it's functional. Uh, nearly done. We got this one here. Store files in more than one place with a shortcut. Uh, I might have a file here that is, uh, let me do this one. Let me go into this, uh, into this UTS file. All right, so I've got a whole bunch of files in here that I did some work we did with the University of Technology Sydney, and here's a letter here, and it's in the UTS folder. But I might want to put it in another folder for some reason. I can't decide, does it belong here, does it belong there? Maybe it belongs in both places. I can right-click it and say, add a shortcut to Drive. And when I do that, it's going to pop up a little box here, and it's going to say, where would you like to put it? Well, I'm going to go into Drive, and I'm going to put it in um, Back to School. And I'm going to stick it in the 2023 folder. And I'm going to say, add that shortcut. And now you'll see I have my UTS folder a file here in the UTS folder. But if I go to Drive and look in my back to school and my 2023 folder, there it is there as well. And you can see it's got a little icon in the corner of it to tell me that it's actually a shortcut. So I can have multiple files. Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I can have the same file appearing in multiple places because of that little shortcut. And I think we must be nearly on our last one, almost. Um, I'm going as fast as I can. If you, you can OCR, optical character recognition, your images and PDFs. If you have a PDF in your Google Drive or a, a picture, so let's say you have a poster and you take a photo of the poster and you put it in your Google Drive, if you open that image with Google Docs, it will actually extract the image for you. Uh, sorry, it will extract the text from the image. So you'll get the picture in a Google Doc, and you'll also get all the text that was in the picture underneath that image as well. It's a super easy way to extract the text from a photograph if you need to do that. And if you open a PDF, it will actually open as an editable Google Doc. So if you need, ever need to edit a PDF, you can do it right here in Google Drive. And finally, there are keyboard shortcuts. There is tons and tons of keyboard shortcuts. Um, if you want to see all of them in Drive, you can press Shift and the slash mark, and what that gives you is Shift slash. 
it on time gives you shifts. Oh, oh, why is it not doing it? Um, why is it not doing it? That's a good question. Shift slash. Oh, there you go. Okay. So this is the keyboard shortcut list inside Google Drive. So if you wanted to, if you're a keyboard shortcut person, there is tons in there and you can access them all there. Um, cut, copy, and paste, which didn't actually used to work in Drive at one point, does work now. So you can use that. Uh, most of us are pretty familiar with cut, copy, and paste. But there's a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts in there. And the way you access them is just anywhere on, in Drive, just go, uh, what do I say? Well, shift slash. I'm sorry, don't be inside a thing. I don't know what I'm doing here. Run. Oh, sorry, it's control slash. Control, I'm going to fix that. I'm a bit of a duffer, aren't I? Control, C T R L. Control slash. <laughs> that is the correct one. Uh, and, ladies and gentlemen, with that, that brings us to the end of my 15 tips on 15, uh, a little more than 15 minutes, my apologies, for Google Drive. Um, but hopefully, you got something out of that. Uh, these will be available as a video when I finish the recording. I will save it and store it on the website where you registered for our back to school sessions. Uh, this morning's one is there as well, um, as is yesterday's video as well, and all the slides. You'll find them all on that site. So I hope that was useful for you. I'm going to stop the recording and like, 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 like so. Stop recording.